Hi everybody. Welcome to week two and module two for accounting theory. Uh, now this is a very interesting module uh, because we're talking about the regulatory environment. And when we talk regulation, and that means of course, um, we're talking about whether or not uh, an, an economy should be regulated or shouldn't be regulated. And if it should be regulated, how much? So we present to you this week the views of two opposing camps. There are those who don't believe in regulation at all. They believe that the market should be left to do what the market does best. And the market is capable of weeding out weak performers, weeding out scoundrels, and only those who provide value for investors uh, can survive in a market. Now, that's all well and good. The people who believe in regulation uh, say, yeah, okay, so you can do that, but it takes you too long. And by the time the market weeds out the scoundrels, they can do an enormous amount of damage and leave a lot of innocent people broke. So if it's all fine with you, we'll just pass some regulation to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, regulation, of course, uh, puts a break on a lot of innovation. Uh, regulation needs laws, that needs watchdogs, it needs bureaucrats, it needs a lot of money to enforce. Uh, so is there a right answer or a wrong answer? No, of course not. If anything, the, the right answer when you find it is usually somewhere in the centre. But then of course it becomes a question of if it's not full regulation and partial regulation, uh, what's the good mix? What's a good balance? And I can't provide you with a general answer to that. You have to find out um, on a case-by-case -case basis. And an informed uh, opinion means that you've read a lot of the thought and a lot of the theory behind what's going on. Out there in the, the wild world, of course, in politics, you'll find that uh, those who believe in regulation and those who don't tend to fall into the left-right spectrum of politics. So those who believe that the market should be left alone to a large extent with minimal regulation, tend to be on the right of politics. So in Australia, you have the Australian Liberal Party and in America, you have the US Republicans, for example. On the other hand, you have people who think that you just can't have too much regulation. They want to regulate everything. Uh, and you'll find these on the left of politics. So in Australia, the Australian Labor Party, and in the United States, you have the Democrats. And when these parties are in power, you find um, an explosion in um, regulatory law, uh, watchdogs, uh, large budgets, and bureaucracies for these people. Now, I'm not saying that to say one side is, is right, one side is wrong. Again, um, there has to be some balance. So what I am saying to you is that being aware of the conversations that are going on and the theories behind these conversations will serve you very well indeed. And a case in point is the case study of Enron in the United States at the end of the 20th century. Um, Enron was a large company and it profited quite handsomely from the deregulation of the United States energy industry. Now this was a pretty dead industry. It was heavily regulated and there was no innovation and it was just a straight supply market, uh, a utilities market. So when it was deregulated, players like Enron entered and true to form, um, when, deregulate, when deregulation comes in, in other words, regulations are lifted, um, innovation really comes to the fore. And Enron was a company that brought a lot of innovation and a lot of energy uh, to the energy market. However, they also brought the dark side of corporate life. They brought rampant greed. And so it wasn't too long before, despite all the good things they did, they were actually playing the market for their own self-interest. And the state of California, for example, was nearly sent totally bankrupt by the actions of Enron. And they blackmailed the state by controlling the power supply. So eventually, of course, Enron because I was so interest, interested in their own um, profits and their own self-interest, um, went bankrupt. 
And this was an enormous scandal in the United States. And the regulators, in this case, the United States Congress, were keenly aware that the voting public were looking for someone to blame. So they thought, well, gee, we'd better be seen to be doing something. We'd better be seen to be getting tough. So they passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, which many have criticised as being an overreaction, but it's there and elements have come through to other economies such as Australia. So here we'll find parts of it in our Corporations Act. Now the question you need to ask yourself is, did the Congress in that situation ask, uh, sorry, act in the public interest or did they act in their own interest? In other words, they needed to be seen to be doing something so they can get re-elected. Again, there's no easy answer. Another question to ask you is, can you find instances of where, when regulation is passed, that those people or groups being regulated actually capture the mechanisms that are regulating them? Uh, and here in Australia, for example, the accounting bodies are often held up as capturing the accounting standard setting process. Now, does this happen because these people uh, are often the best people to be on these bodies or is there self-interest? You'll be the judge. So these are very interesting theories, um, well worth reading and researching. And again, no easy answers, but the more informed you are, the better you are to have an informed opinion and a good opinion on what's happening. So get stuck in this week. It's very, very interesting. And um, ask questions if you find anything tricky. So. Good luck, people, and bye for now. Hooroo.